Hello, welcome to Catholic Life, Ordinary People with Extraordinary Faith. I'm Deacon Jody Moscona. Thank you for joining us today. Today I'm joined by one of my brother deacons, Deacon Stephen Gonzalez. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. And uh, it, Stephen and I go way back since before he was a deacon, when, he, <laughs> when I was assigned to Christ the King. So we're old yeah, buds we're and old right. friends. Yeah. And so this is a very uh, comfortable conversation we're going to have Definitely. today. So Definitely. welcome to the show. Uh, today we want to talk about Holy Week and in particular the Triduum. But before we get to the Triduum, we got to get to Palm Sunday. And before we get there, we want to know a little bit about this guy. So let's talk <laughs> about you, Stephen. Okay. Uh, so I know, um, you know, you've been through the whole process. T tell everybody about what your process was like to ordination. Um, well, I, I like I tell people, being a deacon was not my idea. Um, I was comfortable in being a music minister for multiple decades. And then there was a time in my life where I was kind of reaching a kind of a low point, and I was kind of heading in the wrong direction. And like I tell people, God hit me over the head with a two by four spiritually and said, son, don't, you know, I'm, I'm inviting you over here. You go that way, yeah, the you wrong know, way, the wrong way, exactly. <laughs> so, so I said, okay, cool. And um, that, that, that uh, event took about three months to get over. And then um, I had what I called my affirmation experience at a retreat. And uh, he says, now that I've got your attention, this is what I'm inviting you to. And um, I got kind of uh, an, uh, an additional affirmation whenever I got back from the retreat and my wife, Gina, goes, so how was the retreat? And I said, I don't know. And she goes, what do you mean you don't know? I said, I'm thinking I'm being called to be a deacon. And I had no idea who a deacon was or what they did or anything like that. And she goes, okay. <laughs> and I'm like, wait a minute, what do you mean affirmation? Okay? You know, so that started the whole almost six year process. And um, in fact, it's been 10 years this year that I was ordained in June 12, 2000. That's awesome. That's great. Um, yeah, the time flies, doesn't it? Very much so. Especially when you, when you get moved around, like both of us have been moved around from parish to parish. It, yeah, it, it, right. it, uh, it accelerates the, the sense of the timing because you don't get comfortable in one place. Exactly. Well, I mean, the, the whole point of, of ordination into the deacon, into the diaconate, is we are ordained by the bishop to service for the diocese. Um, of course, under the supervision of the parish uh, pastor. Uh, but we, we are ordained to service to the diocese. And so we're just moved around whenever we need, you know, whenever yeah. there's a need. They tell us. They tell us. <laughs> they, it's not that. <laughs> it's sort of like that. We do. They do care. <laughs> I'll yes, just leave yes, it there. Yes, what they we do. think. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> so, uh, so I, I know you've been around different parishes, and and we don't need to get into all that. But what we want to do is talk about this year. So uh, this year, where, as we record this, we're in Lent, and of course we've all been through the uh, uh, the talks on you know um, sacrifice and fasting and. Sure almsgiving and develop your prayer life and so that's not what we're here to talk about sure we're here to talk about the joy that comes at the end <laughs> exactly exactly well the thing is in order to get to the joy at the end we have to get through like you just said palm sunday and in actually it's, it's kind of interesting to me that palm sunday actually starts in a very happy note with that gospel of jesus's triumphant entrance into jerusalem you know and, um, you know, it, it, it's, it's the, uh, interesting to me also that Palm Sunday is the only Mass that has two Gospels. So you start with the happy note, and then you get to the other Gospel. <laughs> and you passion. say, everybody sit down, because this is a long one. <laughs> exactly. This is, this is the Passion of the Year, you know, and, and you know, this is uh, Year A, so it's going to be Matthew's uh, Passion account. Uh, and then, and then uh, of course, we, we get the, uh, we get the uh, Palms. And then once we're done with the palms at our house, let's say, we are invited actually to bring them back to the parish so that they can be burned and turned into ash for the next Ash Wednesday. Right. It's really, really cool the way yeah. it's all thought out. It, it, all, it all works out. So um, what, April 5th is Palm Sunday. Yes. And um, uh, we, uh, you know, it's, uh, having been at the cathedral for those six years, I have a different perspective because, you know, the diocese does their Palm Sunday where we start across the street, we march to, you know, it's, it's a whole big thing. Most of us at our parishes, we start out front. Yes. 
and, and we read that first gospel that you mentioned, um, and then the opening prayer, and then we invite everybody to process in. Process in with their palms, yes, exactly. And, and uh, some parishes do it better than others. You know, some everybody is escorted out and then escorted in, and some they just do it, come outside if you want. You know, it just depends. And there's no really right or wrong. You know, it's the experiential part of sure. it. Sure, and to be honest, it is the Holy Week is the culmination of Lent because Pat, Palm Sunday is still in Lent, um, but we just have a few more days of Lent. Um, you know, the first part of Lent, starting with Ash Wednesday, is four and a half weeks to Lightary Sunday, and we focus on our sinfulness, our brokenness, you know, our our, our uh, messiness. And then we have another week and a half, starting with Lightary Sunday, that we focus on the Lord's sacrifice because of our messiness and brokenness and such. And when we enter into Palm Sunday, there's a, there's a real laser focus on, okay, we're about to hit the real deal here. You know, this is the yearly remembrance of our Lord's sacrifice. Uh, it is a time actually of quiet, to be honest, uh, between uh, Palm Sunday and the Holy Triduum. Uh, you don't hear much about what happens on Holy Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, per se. Um, so it's a time of reflection. It's a time of preparation for the Holy Triduum. And it all begins with Palm Sunday. And some people still call it Passion Sunday because, again, it's read the only passion. Sunday where we read that Passion of the, of the, of the week. And then um, from Palm Sunday, uh, as I said, there's a quiet time. And then we get to the Holy Triduum, which starts on Holy Thursday. Now... For the Baton Rouge Diocese, that movement of the Holy Triduum actually starts the day before on Holy Wednesday at right. 1030 when we have what's known as Chrism Mass. Chrism Mass right. And I'll tell you, if, 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 if a person out there has never experienced a Chrism Mass, Gotta it is one it. of the most moving things that they can experience. Seriously. Now, now um, just so everybody will know, um, no the norm is to have the Chrism Mass on Holy Thursday in the morning, and then you move right into the Mass of the Last Supper um, that evening. We do it traditionally a little bit different just because we have such a large diocese and it's hard to get people moved around, um, and so we do it on Wednesday. So uh, you're right. They ought to come. <laughs> that's it. That's it. And, and the thing is, there's lots of things that happen during the Chrism Mass. Uh, the first obvious thing is the blessing of the oils. The bishop blesses the three oils uh, that are going to be used for that year. Uh, the second thing that happens is that the priests renew their vows, uh, their priestly vows. Uh, they are married to the church, and it's sort of like a, a renewal of their marriage vows uh, in front of the bishop and, and the church. Um, one of the cool things about the Christian Mass is that the parishes and institutions select people, select representatives to be sent to the cathedral. And they receive the oils that have been blessed and then the bishop sends them back. So in a sort of symbolic way, we could maybe say they're uh, fulfilling an apostolic role because apostle, you know, translated means to be sent. Mm -hmm. So of course we know the apostles are, are the bishops, but they're fulfilling that apostolic role in that they're sent and then they're sent back. Mm -hmm. It's really an ebb and flow, really a beautiful uh, symbology there. Um, and then we get to Holy Thursday, and behind the scenes there's a lot of activity that goes on. Right, um, absolutely. You know, they, 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 we, we were in purple, now we're gonna be in white. Mm -hmm. And then there may be a rehearsal for the Holy Triduum. At that point, what's gonna happen Holy Thursday, Good Friday, and, and the Easter Vigil? Uh, or you'll split them up. It depends on the pastor. It depends on how, how he wants things to be done. Um, but Holy Thursday, at the beginning of the Mass, is the reception of the holy oils, where the parishioners are introduced to those newly blessed oils that were blessed the day before. Mm -hmm. And then the Mass continues on as sort of normal. And then after the uh, homily, we have what's called the mandatum, which is the washing of the feet. And it is one of the most moving experiences. I mean, you, mm -hmm. you and I have experienced the mandatum from the both clergy sides, sides exactly, yeah. both sides. Um, and to be honest, that is Christ's ultimate, I think, um, 
call to service. Mm -hmm. And like I said before, deacons are uh, ordained to service for the diocese. So it's really a diaconate uh, core type of thing where Jesus is saying we're called to serve each other mm -hmm. type of thing. So let's back up a little bit. Sure. So um, from a pastoral perspective working at the church now full time, organizing this thing is not the easiest thing to do <laughs> because we have to have uh, people to do what you just said, carry the oils in. So what many parishes do, and you may experience this if you go, and we encourage you to go to the Triduum, is we will use our RCIA folks for these roles because they are the catechumens and candidates that are going to be um, receiving the Easter sacraments on Saturday night. So we want them there on Thursday so they get the full experience of the Triduum. And so you'll see people carrying those oils in, and in a lot of parishes, those are the candidates or catechumens. Yes, I've seen it in some parishes. Of course, the, you have the oil of the infirmed where a person who goes to maybe nursing homes or hospitals or whatever will, will bring that in. Um, for the oil of the catechumens, it's usually maybe an RCIA candidate or the elect or maybe a person in the RCIA core team. And then for the sacred chrism, it might be someone who is either you know, newly confirmed or someone who's a candidate for confirmation. Uh, I've seen that before, uh, but that, those are choose those are chosen right. well before Holy Thursday. Right. And then the other part of it is choosing the twelve. Exactly, choosing um, the twelve. That could be you know uh, people who have just experienced a baptism with their child, for example. Um, one of the uh, catechists who are not maybe part of the confirmation process. Um, maybe someone who does uh, food pantry or something like that, or Ordinary, everyday Which person. is where we're going to take a break. Ordinary people with extraordinary faith. You're watching Catholic. You're watching, uh, uh, I even forgot the name of our own show, <laughs> Catholic Life Television. And look, we're, I'm excited because Stephen's here and we're ex talking about something that's dear to our heart because this experience of the Triduum, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday of Holy Week, is something everybody ought to experience. We're going to dive into it a little bit deeply, more deeply when we come back from the break. So you're watching Catholic Life. Stay with us. We'll be right back. I had to leave my parents. I had to move schools. I don't know anyone here. Everything keeps changing. Why is this happening to me? I'm sure glad you're here. Change a child's story. There's a child in foster care waiting for a volunteer like you. You know there's a light glows by the front door don't forget the keys under the mat when childhood stars shine always stay humble and kind don't expect a free ride from no one don't hold a grudge or a chip and here's why bitterness keeps you from flying Always stay humble and kind Hold the door, say please, say thank you Don't steal, don't cheat, don't lie I know you got mountains to climb But always stay humble and kind Well, the dreams your dreams
Welcome back to Catholic Life. Thank you for staying with us through the break. We're talking to Deacon Stephen Gonzalez, my good friend for a long time. He's been a deacon 10 years this year. And uh, we're talking about Holy Week, more particularly, we've eased into the Triduum. So we just got to the washing of the feet, which is right after the homily of the Mass of the Last Supper. Let's talk about that part. You mentioned that they'll pick whoever they think. We, at St. Teresa, we usually use a lot of the RCA people, yeah. either the spouse and or or whatever. And and we like to do, we like to pick some people that are um, uh, diverse, maybe some Hispanics or maybe some people that have a handicap or, you know, we like to, we like to be very inclusive in this. Mm -hmm. So, but every parish is different and, yeah. and they do it. So talk about, you, you already mentioned it's service, but, um, Tell everybody how it happens. Well, basically, the deacon and the priest remove their outer garment. Uh, the priest is called chasuble, the deacon is called a dalmatic. And we also remove our stoles. And then, with the help of the uh, altar servers, we have a bowl, we have a pitcher, and we, we wash their feet. And um, what's passing through my mind as I'm doing this isn't the fact that there's a bunch of people behind me in the pews is that I'm focused on this child of God and that, you know, I get to do this. I pinch myself mentally as going, I get to do this. And it's such a great service for this person. And then it's over. And then I'm ready, for, I'm, I'm going to the next one. Right. And the process repeats over and over and over again. By the time that that uh, mandantum is done, I'm like on cloud nine spiritually, right. big time. Um, so then after the Madatum, uh we have the nor a, a Mass. At the end of Mass, however, we have a very special thing called the Eucharistic Procession. And each parish does it a little differently. Um, but essentially what happens is the Eucharist is taken from the altar and is processed in a certain way to either the tabernacle that's in the church or maybe to another building, uh, in which case there's the four-pole tent type of thing going on. Uh, and then there's a adoration after that uh, for a little while. Mm -hmm. uh, depends on the parish again. Uh, mm -hmm. Sometimes it ends at nine. Sometimes at ten. Sometimes at eleven. Right. Um, and so what what we that. do uh, what we do is um, we do the procession and we put the the um, ciborium on the altar so we can then have adoration there and then we we uh, reserve it afterwards back to wherever it's going to be. Um, yeah reserved till Friday, because there is no Mass on Friday. Exactly, and that brings us to Good Friday. It's the only day in the entire liturgical year that the church does not have a Mass. I've been asked that multiple times. Uh, good Friday Mass. No, it's a Good Friday service. It's a communion service with veneration of the cross. And in actual, uh, before we get there, however, again, there's a color change, white to red this time. And some parishes, their Good Friday starts at 5 o'clock in the morning because they're being either uh, bussed or dropped off somewhere for a Good Friday walk. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm thinking of Our Lady of the Holy Rosary. That's my home parish. Uh, we used to be all the way at St. Mary's in Convent, and we would walk 12.6 miles all the way back to Holy Rosary for 2.30. And we would have along the way the Stations of the Cross. And uh, this started in 1996 with four people. Last year, there were almost 400 people doing awesome. this. Awesome, yeah. And it was, it's an amazing, amazing experience. Um, traffic has gotten a little bit busier on LA 70, so what they've done is they've gone and started it at Holy Rosary, go to St. Anne's and Sorrento and come back. It's shorter, so you can take it at a, you know, a, a slower pace, so that way more people can, can do it and such. Um, but along the way, they, they have the Way of the Cross, they have Stations of the Cross, and they have there a, a witness that pertains to that station. Mm -hmm. And then at 2.30, they're at the cross in front of the church. They have the 14th station, and then they process in silence into the church. And it's just amazing watching almost 400 people moving, and you, you can hear a pin drop. Mm -hmm. you know? And then it starts with uh, the Good Friday service at 3. Um, we don't have a procession. But we do prostrate ourselves. You know, we, we lay down in, in uh, acknowledgement of the Lord's sacrifice for us. Now, some churches um, 
will carry the cross in yes. in a form of a procession with the priests and the deacons accompanying the cross, which will be placed in the place where it will be available for um, everybody to reverence at the appropriate time, and then the priest and the deacons prostrate at that point, um, which is a sign of what? Humility. Humility, exactly, <laughs> humility. And um, the, the first reading is all about the suffering servant from Isaiah, and it pairs with the gospel, which is always the gospel from John. And then there's a brief homily about it, and then there's the veneration of the cross, but before that in some parishes they have the reception of the cross. So the deacon, if there's a deacon or the priest, will go to the back of the church. Mm -hmm. And there's something that's really, really cool about that reception because it mirrors what's going to be happening in a little bit more than 24 hours after that. Right. So they raise the cross and behold, behold the wood of the cross is chanted and, mm -hmm. and then uh, come let us adore the response in the back of the church. Then in the middle of the aisle, they do it again at the foot of the steps yeah. of the So don't sanctuary. be surprised if your church, the, what Stephen just said is the way it's supposed to happen, yeah. but pastors do have some flexibility, sure. and, and that will depend on pe the people in your parish, you know, what um, is comfortable for them. Sure. But the way it's supposed to happen is exactly what Stephen just said, and that chant is pretty powerful. It is extremely powerful, and it's hard to learn. <laughs> yeah. So, anyway, yeah. Um, so after that, we have the veneration of the cross, and people come up just, you know, as, as, as uh, in communion, and they venerate the cross. And then there's what's known as the solemn intercessions after that. It's the only time that we have this. There are 10 of them, which includes things like the Holy Church, the Pope, uh, those who don't believe in God, those who don't believe in Christ, the Jewish people, uh, those in public office even. We pray for mm -hmm. people who are in public office. It's just amazing. And then finally, the final one is the ones that the, uh, the church say that they're in tribulation, you know. Um, and then after that is the communion rite. And then it's over. It's done. There is no exit, the Lord be with you and with your spirit thing. It's just, it's done. Um, so that's Good Friday. Mm -hmm. Now, some parishes elect to go ahead and change their color then. Some wait until Holy Saturday to change their color from red to white in anticipation of what's coming up at that night. Holy Saturday, I, I, find it, I found it amazing in the, uh, in the Missal. There's a little write-up in the Missal itself about Holy Saturday that's about this long. And it's just basically, it's a time of quiet. Some parishes have the uh, catechumen anointing during that time, along with the RCIA having their last little micro-retreat, so to speak. Right. Uh -huh. you know? And then there's a rehearsal, maybe, for what's coming up in a few hours. And then it gets dark, and the church is not lit. And then we start the holy, the, the, the most solemn mass, the wonderful mass, uh, Easter Vigil, mm -hmm. with what's known as the Lucinarium, the rite of fire. And it's incredible. It's one of the most moving experiences. Uh, they, we light a fire. The candle is blessed, and, and there's a certain thing that happens to the, to the candle. The fire is blessed, and for the very first time, that fire is put to that candle, this four- or five-foot candle. And that candle now becomes the candle to be used for almost all the sacraments. Right, Paschal candle. The Paschal candle. Uh, funerals also, because it recalls our baptism, that type of thing. And just as we raise the cross, or the crucifix, during Good Friday, during those times, that's what we do with the Paschal candle too. In the back of the church, we raise, we say the light of Christ. Mm -hmm. We say thanks be to God. And then we go to the middle of the aisle, we do the same thing, and at the foot of the sanctuary, we do the same thing. Some elect to put their candle in the holder at that time. Some elect to hold the candle until everybody's in, and then places the candle in the holder. And I need to back up a little bit because when we enter the church, there are some parishes that they have ushers with two candles and they light their candle from the Paschal candle and then everybody else lights their candle from those two as the Paschal candle processes in. Right. So the light illumines the church with the candlelight from the Paschal candle. Exactly. And uh, to be honest, whenever I'm carrying that candle 
and I turn around for that third time and the Amazing. church is dark. And then as the people come in, the light grows. Amazing. And grows and grows to this warm, just, it's like a loving embrace from God, this light. So um, we're running out of time. Sure. So what happens is that we move on into the, the Mass, the Easter Vigil Mass. Yes. We have those sacred readings. Sure, we have seven Old Testament readings, uh, Roman, uh, uh, right. reading from Romans. And then um, I think it's from John, I want to say. It's the two Marys and the empty tomb. Yeah. Uh, so what gospel. we do is the pastor will sometimes pick whatever uh, gospel, because there's several. There's the yes. vigil, there's the night of, there's the morning of, there's the day, day of. Yeah. And whatever the pastor wants to preach on, he can pick sure. it. A lot sure. of times that happens. But after the homily, we have the reception of the candidates. We have the reception of the candidates. The baptisms take place. If they're adults, they are confirmed there as well. Some um, parishes have immersion baptisms. I'm thinking of Christ the King, like we mm -hmm. mentioned before. Uh, Most Blessed Sacrament has it also. And then the other ones, there's the usual, usual baptism where you have the baptismal font and you, you, you do the water. And for those them. that have been baptized in a, a Trinitarian way in another church, they just receive com the confirmation. confirmation. Right, and the thing is also, if, um, if they've been baptized, they only have to, I think they only have to say a certain phrase that says we you know we believe in this it's not necessarily that they receive confirmation I want to say well th some of them have and they're, they're coming back but we do that's, we that's, do give them yes, we yes, do yes, give yes. them confirmation yeah 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 so most ones, of the time yeah the ones the that are coming back we have that little the reverts yeah <laughs> yeah yeah so um, but after that there is um, the mass and it ends with the Chanted Alleluia, you know, which is going, awesome. Going to peace of Christ, Alleluia, Alleluia, and everybody says, "Thanks be to God, Alleluia, Alleluia." Back and at then us. we go and have cake and punch. That's it, <laughs> cake and punch and, and finger foods. So, uh, well, we just made it because we're just about out of time. So, cool. good job on that and uh, the differences. I just want to point out one quick thing: is whatever your parish does, if it's different than what we talked about, it doesn't make it right or wrong. It's just that there are some places where there are options in, in, in the right. And uh, so don't get uh, hung up on that, just experience it. And we highly encourage you to be there for Thursday night, Friday night, and Saturday for the Holy Triduum. Thank you for being with awesome. us. Thank you, thank you for having me. And thank you for watching. It's been an experience talking about the uh, Holy Week liturgies that are soon to come. Till next time, thank you for watching. God bless.